capsule for the Shakespeare's Academy. Today we will speak about one of the most significant personalities of the 20th century who just passed away. In fact, there were two important deaths, one of Queen Elizabeth and the second of uh, Mr. Gorbachev, Mikhail Gorbachev. Both lived to a ripe old age. The Queen died at the age of 96, and Mikhail Gorbachev died at the age of 91. So both of them dominated the 20th century like no other person has. And uh, their departure marks the end of an era in the UK, and also on in the end of an era in the um, Soviet Union and in the geopolitics of the world. So Mr. Gorbachev is certainly the most outstanding figure of the 20th century because the changes that he brought about were so fundamental, unimaginable, unthinkable at one time. If the things had moved the way he wanted, he would have been hailed as a leader who changed the world for the better. Because his ambition was to reform communism and to strengthen the Soviet Union and to liberate the people of the Soviet Union. That was his objective. And that's what he tried for. But unfortunately, his efforts were not welcomed by the people of the Soviet Union because they were so accustomed to the communist system. And the changes that he tried to bring about were not acceptable to the majority of the people. Not that what he anticipated to do or what he expected to do would have been worse for the Soviet Union. It would have been better, definitely. And his intention was only to accelerate the changes in the Soviet Union, to make it more liberal, and make communism have a human face. But he was too much ahead of his times. And therefore, what he did did not work out the way he wanted it to boomerang. And it resulted in the collapse of the Soviet Union. Though the Cold War ended, it ended in favor of capitalism, because the collapse of communism at that time was considered to be the success of capitalism. But we know that there were several forces at play at that particular time. And things would have changed in any case, even if Mr. Gorbachev was not there. But his efforts to liberalize communism and to strengthen the Soviet Union failed and therefore he is now known as a tragic figure, not as a successful politician or a successful statesman. So the situation in the Soviet Union was quite bad, even at the time of the end of the Brezhnev era. I was in Moscow in uh, 1978 when I saw President Brezhnev in the Kremlin. And it was quite visible that he was not there at all. He was too old to deal with the issues in front of him, but he was continuing somehow. And he was not even legible in his conversations. And one felt that the time had come for a change. But it took six years after that to have a change in the Soviet leadership. There were other leaders, Andropo was there, and Chernyanko was there. And these people had very short terms as president. But at that time, Gorbachev was already uh, a leader of note, and he could have really taken over. But it didn't happen till 1985, because the, the leadership, the existing leadership, resisted any change. At the age of 54, Gorbachev was considered to be too young to take over. So, but he rose gradually and slowly in the communist system. The lesson that one has to learn from reformer, for, for reformers is when you reform something, if you change the fundamentals of the system that brought you there, then there is a danger of that change 
consuming the person who wanted to change. And it's been compared to a person who sits on the top of a tree and cuts the branches on which he is sitting. He got onto the top of the tree because the tree is there and uh, he is the product of the system. But if he cuts down the same tree with him sitting on it, obviously everybody knows that will be a disaster. That is really what happened. Reform should be slow and very steady and the framework of the old system should somehow be maintained. And that's what exactly that Gorbachev tried to do. Uh, the system was horrible. Well, I lived in the Soviet Union between 1974 and 77. Uh, we are used to a system of shortages and people running around looking for products and fancy for foreign goods and um, you know shortages and standing in line. So many difficulties were there. But then the impression in the world was the Soviet Union was very powerful, second most powerful country in the world. And therefore, the, the difficulties at that time were temporary and the Soviet Union will emerge as a, as a big power, powerful uh, nation in the world. That was the expectation. But the situation became worse and worse as the days passed by. And uh, poverty, shortage of food, and uh, confusion, chaotic situations in the factories, manufacturing was failing. Um, the Western civilization, the Western world uh, tried to weaken the Soviet Union further by taking measures that would not help the Soviet Union. The economy collapsed and the political system was in danger. All this was there when uh, Mr. Gorbachev took over. Uh, as the general secretary of the party. And then he became president only much later in 1990. But during this period, all his effort was to somehow save the Soviet Union from itself, as it were. So, uh, and the first thing he did was to introduce what he called glasnost, that is openness, and also, and also perestroika, which is restructuring. So these were the fundamental uh, concepts that he tried to bring into the system, both contrary to fundamental belief of the communist system and the communist state, because openness, classness is openness. Openness is not part of the system. Everything very secretive. What happens in the Politburo, what happens to even the changes in the leadership were all very secret. People had to determine the importance of the people in, in power by looking at the photographs to see who is standing next to him. The rumors of people taking over, people losing power, and it was all a big, uh, what shall we say, chaotic kind of atmosphere. But at the same time, because of its impression of its strength and the military might, it sustained itself over a period of time. But this was not going to happen. This had to change. There was no question about it. So what Mr. Gorbachev did was to basically become a catalyst for changes. Not in the direction in which he wanted it to go. Because the system was already uh, rotten in the sense of there was uh, corruption, there was uh, alcoholism, and the system had become kind of hollow and brittle when he took over. So in a sense, one can say that perhaps uh, Gorbachev did the right thing by bringing about changes. On the other hand, he could have probably continued the same system and survived. And uh, Soviet Union may also have survived at that time. So that's judgment has to be later. But what he thought at that time was change was necessary. He is not, he's not supposed to have said, if not now, when are we going to change? And then he said, if, he's, if it is not me, who? So he decided to take the bull by the horns and started dealing with the uh, system. And he was very different from the classical uh, political leaders of the Soviet Union 
He was well educated. He had an educated wife who uh, played a role in the policy making. And so he thought that he would be able to reform socialism through a very decisive and vigorous action program. And so what he wanted, even though he, when he talked about glossiness gloss, and perestroika means restructuring. So restructuring a society through openness was the challenge that he took over. So instead of becoming uh, a part of the uh, European world, he decided that he will compromise, not compromise, but certainly deal with the West on equal terms and try to bring about some concession. And uh, he uh, brought in some thaw in the relationship with China and uh, with the West also. Uh, he was more friendly. He uh, had uh, agreements relating to unnecessary buildup of arms because arms limitation was an important was an important objective for him because both the United States and the Soviet Union were amassing arms, wealth, and uh, capacity to destroy the world several times over. So he decided to cut down the expenditure on arms by negotiating arms limitation. Because after all, why do we need so many arms and ammunition and missiles and so on? It could be reduced. He did that. He withdrew troops from Afghanistan very early. Uh, not of course entirely, but he cut that. He thought that that would be important. And the uh, Soviet Union had already bogged down in Afghanistan since 1979. So troops withdrawal, more improved relations with China, then negotiations with the Western power, and uh, reduction of nuclear weapons. Then uh, also liberalizing relationship with the East European countries. So nobody believed that uh, at that time that would, that the Warsaw Pact would collapse and Soviet Union will withdraw troops from all these countries which are members of the Warsaw Pact. But he was more of a dreamer and an idealist. At the same time, he was a realist. So, there, so he, he dreamt of a New Soviet Union, and he had an idealistic approach to that. And he thought he would make changes slowly and reach the goal of giving communism a human face. But he was also a realist, and that is why he outreached to the West because of a compulsion, and he wanted peace in the West. So many stereotypes about uh, uh, Soviet Union uh, changed in 1985, and then he moved on to a comprehensive restructuring. And that is what really did not suit the ordinary people. They had got used to a system which met the essential needs of the people for a long time. And though it was deteriorating, they thought they could save it. So it was difficult for the ordinary people to accept the restructuring that he introduced. And then he changed people at the higher levels of the decision-making process and um, opening up the society. And from 1996 to eight, 1986 to 87, that is the initial years of his power, there was a kind of optimism that things are going to move uh, for the better, but it did not pan out the way he had expected it because uh, people were cynical and the bureaucracy was hostile and the quality of uh, life had deteriorated. So in a sense, the old system got dismantled, but a new system could not be established. So he decided to assume the power of the president to make it more uh, dynamic. And he assumed more powers as the president of the Soviet Union. But the whole system 
was not accustomed to the kind of socialism that he introduced. And therefore, the bureaucracy was not able to sustain, and they had no experience of managing a market economy. So, a sudden uh, liberalization of the tight economic control became uh, very, very difficult to, uh, to maintain. And so, the, the, there was a complete collapse of the, of the system. And um, of course, the, uh, in 1991, there was a, an attempt to a military coup. And finally, in 1991, December, he had to leave and uh, he, had to, he had to resign and uh, Yeltsin took over. So Soviet Union had broken up already and the various forces were set apart, were raised. And uh, the West was jubilant that they had uh, destroyed the Soviet Union. And therefore they did not do anything to support the system. If the West had in fact taken a more, uh, more uh, realistic position and supported the system in the way that Gorbachev wanted, uh, perhaps it would have been different. Uh, but the, the West saw this an opportunity to uh, destroy the Soviet Union and to remove a second superpower. And therefore, there was, a, there was despondency and despair, and uh, everyone tried to do various things. And Yeltsin, who took over, his idea was to completely surrender to the United States. And uh, he was not a balanced person. But he did try to uh, bring back the Soviet system in some ways, but of course it was uh, too, uh, too late. And uh, even though uh, Gorbachev, in a sense, was supportive of Putin, who emerged after Yeltsin as the leader of the Soviet Union, he was also quite new. And, um, but he did not appreciate much of what Gorbachev did. And that is why when he passed away, they did not even give him a state funeral. Though it was, uh, he was given a place among the distinguished leaders of the Soviet Union, but uh, it was more a private uh, ceremony, even though some, uh, some leaders like the former president Medvedev, and Hungarian prime minister attended. So the most consequential figure of the uh, 20th century who brought the Cold War to an end and uh, unleashed a system which he could not control. And he gave freedom to East Europe. There was a, a risk of nuclear weapons being used. He allowed the Berlin Wall to fall, the unification of Germany without uh, bloodshed. So it was a, a sudden dramatic change. And it took about 20 years for Russia uh, to come to uh, terms with the reality. And uh, now Putin has emerged as a, as a strong leader. And by then, uh, Soviet Union's orientation changed and not as a European power, uh, but not more as a, as a power extending to the East. And, um, and that has brought about the changes. And then the war, Ukraine has started another, another process, which we, we do not know what the consequence of that would be. Uh, but certainly, uh, Putin's vision is very different from Gorbachev's vision. And uh, he was very critical of all the communist leaders who had ruined the old Russia. And the Soviet Union was given the nationality of all the states, and they were given freedom to secede if necessary. So the whole uh, system was loosened so much that it could not remain as a, uh, as a unitary body. So efforts were made to make a commonwealth of nations, etc. But nothing happened. And now we have all these uh, 15 republics and Russia assuming the permanent membership of the Soviet Security Council. 
and slowly emerging as a powerful nation and now challenging the West. So Yeltsin speeded up the, the breakup and uh, then Perestroika failed because of the new system was not acceptable and um, the federalism failed and uh, liberated the people and um, the whole system collapsed. So that is the reason why today Gorbachev is, uh, is a tragic hero. Uh, he, it could have been different, uh, but then it was circumstances. Uh, people say that the Soviet Union would have collapsed anyway, Germany would have been reunified, etc. Uh, but the arrival of uh, Gorbachev and his policies speeded up the whole process. Some people even suspect that he was colluding with the Western countries to uh, destroy the Soviet Union, because that is not acceptable. He was too much of a nationalist and a patriot. From all his actions, it is quite visible that he was not colluding with anybody. He was pursuing his own uh, instincts, and he felt he had to come to the rescue of the state. But the opposite happened, and therefore, he is vilified not only in the Soviet Union, but also elsewhere as someone who ruined the system. But his contribution will last and uh, whatever changes that take place in, the so in, in Russia in the future. And many of the ideas that he put forward may come out. And therefore, those ideas are still there. Even though he is gone, many of the thoughts that he brought out for the betterment of the Soviet Union uh, may still be in play. And of course, it depends on how it plays out. The Ukraine war is probably the real test as to what Russia's future will be. But amidst all this is the danger of use of nuclear weapons, which might destroy everything and lead to another world war. So there also, Gorbachev's contribution will not be small. So extremely controversial figure, successful to a certain extent, but will be known for more for the um, for his failures than for his successes. So that is the summary of uh, uh, Gorbachev's uh, life and contribution. It could have been different if he had not pursued a complete reform of the society system, which brought him to power. So when a system brings him into power, if you have to continue to be in power, you have to also support the system and then gradually bring about changes. But he was impatient, and the time was right for a revolution, right for a revolution, and he tried for it and failed. So that is the story of Orbachev, who is was mourned for what he tried to do, but criticized for what he failed to do. Thank you. Well, these are all theories. You can support any one of them. And I mentioned many of them already. But there are no clear answers to all this. Now you have to just analyze what has happened and find these reasons for it. I don't know why he wanted the USSR to become weak. That I don't think was his effort. His effort was to make it strong. So a leader cannot balance ethical and moral good with also a perception of strength. That is true. But in my view, the fundamental flaw in his approach was his effort to make a complete change with him as continuing as the leader. And therefore, the system collapsed and with him, he collapsed also. All other theories that we, we can examine. But this is probably the simplest way to explain his his plight and his uh, final exit from the world. But, uh, this idea of weakness that he sought, that I don't really understand what he... See, what happened was that his objective was to strengthen the Soviet Union. There's no question about it. But the weaknesses arose because of the uh, lack of enthusiasm of the people for the system. And they thought they could not survive if the whole thing was... Uh, you know, system was changed. And therefore, and the system was not capable of handling the new situation.
they have no experience and the west was in their you know, on their throats as it were and so where was the acceptance possible so all the forces which had remained underground because of the very rigid system was unleashed he unleashed those forces himself but then he would not that he could not direct them in the way in which he wanted to do that and the reason basically the internal situation and plus the external situation the west decided to exploit it completely and destroy the soviet union in which they did but they are now seeing that you know it's emerging again russia is emerging again as a power connection and um, uh, posing a challenge uh, what would have happened if the soviet system and soviet union had continued would the challenge have been greater for the west maybe yes and that's the reason why they didn't want uh, the system to survive and so it suited them and uh, there there's no other no other answer to it now it is history and uh, it has to be studied so many new aspects will come out and uh, more insights will be there there are several studies already that we have quite a few of them in the last few days uh, which uh, give several several theories uh, but uh, what i said was my own reading uh, of the situation and that does not mean that uh, the theories are not valid right but he did support the invasion of or the annexation of crimea by putin you know that he had that yeah. some uh, support for it so again as you said whether it was just to uh, keep it going or it was he sincere about it we don't know and the biggest irony is the nobel prize you see the nobel prize was given to him for weakening the soviet union so because it was not considered to be a, a compliment for what he tried to do but the price was for losing it and that's also an irony of the whole system well i was witness to some of the reaction of the prime minister mr pv narasimha rao at that time as you can imagine uh, it was a it was a big shock uh because even though all this were happening somehow i could see in mr narasimha rao a hope that this will be reversed so this time there was some report from moscow saying that there is a rebellion here or a rebellion there he was visibly hopeful but uh, the merit in it was that he very quickly adjusted himself to the change uh, thanks to dr manmohan singh and uh, the policy that they brought in of uh, uh, of liberalizing the economy and globalizing the economy and then changing the politics you know getting close to the united states the recognizing israel dealing with them so he very quickly moved to change things gorbachev was friendly to india he was particularly friendly to rajiv gandhi and they shared this hope of uh, disarmament Uh, india had no nuclear weapons but still india wanted elimination of nuclear weapons and in that to have a support of somebody who has nuclear weapons was very important so his disarmament initiatives were supported by gorbachev and gorbachev apparently had a had warm feelings for india uh, but that did not come out because he was basically engrossed in other things uh, but um, his uh, his period was not good not bad for india or russia relations and uh, later it was of course followed up by uh, putin and others and so it is a new system but uh, at the same time uh, still it is a legacy relationship and that is why even the present situation people see us as being supportive of, uh, of russia so the forthcoming meeting of the ceo you will see how these leaders interact because it's a new situation completely new situation and it will be very important to understand how they are seeing the new world how they are interacting with each other but i my fear is that there will be a division because i don't see in seo a consensus emerging 
on the Russia China, Russia Ukraine war, for example. Or for any other matter other than um, the pandemic or, or some supply chain reforms, etc. So I don't see a political compromise or a consensus emerging either in the uh, SEO meeting or later the G20 meeting because the issues are so complex. Yes, I'm sure all of you must have read Suhasini Haider's article in the Hindu. It was, she has found a new word, not just multi-alignment, but all alignment. <laughs> so, I don't know how serious she is, but uh, it, in, a true, in a way it is true. The way India is very swiftly moving around the world, neglecting nobody, talking to everybody. Nobody seems to be inimical to us. And, um, you know, very quick-footed action, particularly by the external affairs minister. But what it all lead to is something that we cannot predict. Whatever meetings we have seen in the past after the war started, there have been divisions in these groups. So all these divisions likely to be resolved. Of course, the disengagement on the, in Ladakh, at least one sector, has created a better atmosphere. Uh, but for the remaining areas, apparently the Chinese are taking a very rigid position. So whether this was tactical on the part of both the countries to improve the atmosphere, we don't know. But the challenges, there will be many. I've been saying that this is the time for bilateral relations, because multilaterally we may not be able to achieve much. And what is the new world emerging as? It may be just democratic countries vis-a-vis -vis autocratic countries. That may be the lineup. And not uh, any other lineup like north, south, and so on. So, for that to emerge, there have to be bilateral relationships. So, the challenges are many, and uh, these will emerge only as we move on. But as of now, we are doing very well in the sense that we are managing it like a, like a magician or a, somebody who is, uh, <laughs> um, you know. Uh, playing with several things at the same time and managing to keep the ball up there while we are juggling with it. And that is the feeling one gets and that gives you optimism. All right. Thank you very much.